attend and um, and attend and and well at least be in in, in the house. Mm. Because the thing is, the teacher, what she will do is, I can I can promise you, I've seen this movie play and many times mm. before. So she's going to say, "Yes, we're going to start putting up a point of order, talking about pala pala." She's going to lose her cool. She's going to start screaming at people. She'll eventually call in the sergeant of arms. People are going to be. Um, essentially, you know, physically removed from the same. And um, and effectively, I mean, South Africans are tired of this kind of construction agreement where people are angry, people are anxious, people are anxious about the future, people are plunged into an energy crisis, into a cost of living crisis. The last thing South Africans want to see are politicians um, essentially, you know, being, you know, throwing chairs around and there being a disruption. And so, really, for us, Democratic Alliance, while we don't have much faith in perhaps what the president is going to say, we respect the administration enough, we respect the people who elected us, we will come to work, we will not participate in the drip and pomp and ceremony of the red carpet, we will simply come to work and do our job and make a decision and then put the president on at the relevant time when it is the debate next week. And hold him accountable for the commitment that, that, that he's going to make. One of the questions I asked the Netflix this morning is, what is it that the president can say to inspire us, to encourage us as South Africans and to give us hope in the midst of um, the, the challenges that, that we're facing in the country? What are you expecting in terms of democratic alliance? I, don't, I think he's realized now that he must not come here with these big rings of smart cities and bullet trains. I mean, last year what we saw was he was beginning to give us an update of the commitment he made the previous year. What are you expecting? And do you think there's something he can actually say to inspire the nation? This is a nation in despair. Absolutely. I, I, I think I think the president does have a difficult job tonight. I think um, I think inspire is, is, is a stretch. Mm. Um, I think right now he is in crisis mode. And what we need today is we're going to need some hard truths, firstly, about what has gone wrong and what is going to be the first sort of the firstly the, the most immediate uh, steps that are going to be taken in terms of the energy crisis and um, the longer term um, uh, care. But inspiring, I think the president is just, he's just thrown up. And um, I think that South Africans have actually been quite generous to President Donald Trump um, and given him a chance many, many times. And I think he's run over a rope. Um, I think the ANC is run over ideas. And so I think tonight, the only thing that the president can do is to firstly acknowledge that we are here because of mismanagement of this entire energy crisis. Because you see, just because we are experiencing low, I mean, as we speak today, he's going to be delivering a state of the nation address. There won't be load shedding in the venue, but the rest of South Africans are planned to just stage four load shedding. They won't and be able so to watch it. They won't be able to watch it. And so there has to be an acknowledgement, firstly, that we have, for the past decade and a half, mismanaged. Escom to the point where now it is at a point where it is at a breaking point. Number two, these are the top five things that we're going to do almost immediately to alleviate the kind of load shedding because we know businesses are closing their doors, people, more and more people are joining the unemployment queue, and essentially the 30 million South Africans who are living in poverty, that number is going to continue to rise. And so, really, as I say, he can't come and uh, sing Tuma Mina tonight. He's got to come and literally have a to-do list. And he really cares about the fact that this is what's going to happen. It would also help if uh, he would also indicate that he calls them to what. Because as we sit here, we know that the uh, you know, cabinet reshuffle is happening in the NCC. We don't know if the leader of government business is still in Tuma Mina. Um, and as our job as parliamentarians, and we do not enter into the fray of what the ANC will be doing, but the Deputy President is a very important role of liaising between members of parliament the leader of government business. We don't know who the leader of government business as we stand here to vote is. And so it would really be useful for him to say, this is my team, these are the things that they are tasked with, and South Africans, we are sorry. I suppose it doesn't help that there's also what is uncertain here on so many levels and uncertainty about things like questions. Are we going to have a declaration of the state of disaster? And the ANC has advised him that his government is going to do a state of disaster. Is he going to say anything about the part after being moved to energy? Are you expecting those kind of announcements? Because 
I imagine you're going to use this big platform today uh, to clarify what the position of government is on those things. Look, we, we would completely reject the declaration of the, of the state of disaster. Um, is this what you called for in the VA? No, we, we called for the reprioritization of money in a ring fence manner. Because you see, the, state, the reason why we were saying ring fence uh, these funds so that we can be able to potentially bolster what, where ESCON is, yeah. um, is because we wanted a targeted intervention. But Clement, the problem is with the national state of disaster is what we're going to see is exactly what we saw during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to see, um, you know, tender processes being essentially subverted. We're going to see the kind of looting that we, we saw during the pandemic. And so what we called for was ring fence the amount that is to be targeted with ESCOM. Here are these five emergent, like, you know, urgent things that we need to implement as quickly as possible to essentially alleviate um, the uh, load shedding as it is, um, allow independent health services onto the grid to ease the pressure on ESCOM. These are some of the things that we need to do almost urgently, but not a blanket state of disaster. I mean, that would be problematic for us because we know that in the state of disaster, even the powers of parliament are limited and in terms of being able to play over five years. And so what we expect is to be targeted with the intervention of ESCOM Thank you. 